First, I want to thank Tim Lorden and the Internet Education Foundation for hosting the conference and for inviting me to join you. And to all of the distinguished all-woman panel uh, with its wealth of expertise, thank you to each one of you. A few days ago, our country surpassed the tragic milestone of 400,000 deaths of our fellow Americans uh, to COVID-19. And sadly, the numbers continue to climb. Toward the end of last year, our hopes soared as two vaccines were approved by the FDA. I won't rehash all the details, but the previous administration, I believe, lacked a clear plan to vaccinate Americans efficiently, equitably, and effectively. And this is a major issue, obviously. Thankfully, President Biden has put forward his national strategy for the COVID-19 response and pandemic preparedness, a science and evidence-based plan to crush the virus. The House Health Subcommittee, which I have the privilege of chairing, is already working with his administration to effectuate this plan, which includes a top-level goal to mount a safe, effective, and comprehensive vaccination effort of 100 million vaccines in 100 days. One obstacle to ensuring Americans are vaccinated will be that we're experiencing what the World Health Organization calls an infodemic, an overabundance of both accurate and inaccurate information related to the virus. Since the beginning of the pandemic, we've seen a proliferation of conspiracies on the origins of the virus, criminal efforts to sell scam treatments, foreign efforts to undermine trust in our institutions, and a sustained effort by the former president to spread disinformation. Clearly, misinformation about the COVID vaccine hinders our pandemic response, and we're already seeing evidence of this. Earlier this month, more than half, more than half of Ohio's nursing home staff refused to be vaccinated, even though vaccines were available to them. The reason for this, according uh, to the head of the Ohio Healthcare Association, is the misinformation that nursing home staff are seeing on their social media accounts. This isn't a problem limited to nursing homes or Ohio. The latest nationwide polls show that between 27% and 39% of respondents say they're hesitant about receiving a COVID vaccine. I'm pleased that many of the social media companies uh, have evolved their approach beyond just applying labels uh, to COVID misinformation, uh, since evidence shows that factual labels don't work. Uh, and uh, those labels don't change perceptions. But removing misinformation is only the beginning. Social media platforms should be far more aggressive in removing accounts of repeat offenders and stop purveyors of anti-vaccination content from profiting from harmful posts. Beyond just removing misinformation, we need to promote good information. Federal, state, and local pub public health agencies should more strategically, I think, communicate public health messages online and platform companies should amplify this message. Platforms and government agencies should collaborate with social media influencers to model behaviors important for public health, like receiving a vaccine and wearing masks. These are not uh, altogether difficult things to do but we need help from them in doing this. If we zoom out from COVID specifically, I see our online misinformation problem is largely a product design issue. The algorithmic amplification and recommendation systems that platforms employ spread content that's emotion inducing over what's true. 
The model creates radicalization pathways or rabbit holes of conspiracies, and it keeps users within echo chambers that reinforce biases rooted in anger, anxiety, and fear. I believe long-term solutions to this problem must involve reconsidering the role of algorithmic amplification, product design, and legal liability. But before we can fundamentally restructure our online information ecosystems, we need to do everything we can in the short term to remove COVID misinformation and stop those who spread it, amplify authoritative voices, and encourage public health measures like vaccines, masks, and distancing. I'm grateful for the collective expertise of the panel, and I look forward to learning from each of you. Thank you again for inviting me to join you today. It's been a real honor. And to Tim Lorden, thank you for your special leadership.